Oh, here's something I didn't know. Any of you guys watch Saw? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. I agree. Yes, that's right. Uh huh. I can hear you guys saying yes. It's a goat. Yes, of course. Yeah, it's a goat. I agree yeah. With people who agree with me, I agree with you guys. Thank you. Exactly. So you guys know it. Saw at the very end, you hear that. Dun-dun-dun. And then it's like, oh, it wasn't a lasagna. It was a cow's own the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my fucking God. All right. Welcome to another episode of the Ted and Ed Show. I am your host, Ed. And I am your other host, Ted. All right, that's what I'm talking about. So um, I'm going to just go ahead and get right on into it. Normally, you guys are used to seeing our episodes posted anywhere from like 12 in the morning, 12, in a, 12 Wednesday morning to like maybe 4 a.m. at the latest. Mm-hmm. So this one's posted pretty late, probably midday, mm-hmm. I would have to say, by the time we're done with the uh Recording and video editing. So I'm gonna just let you guys know what what happened. So, it's totally technical difficulties. Yeah, it's totally on me. I apologize. It's not, it's not on you. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it was on my side. Yeah, of the whole thing, but it wasn't my fault. But you know, it, you know, I apologize nonetheless for having you guys wait this long because I know y'all need y'all fix. Mm-hmm. All of you guys have always told me. When can I get that sweet audible chocolate on the airwaves? There and I apologize for withholding it for you. So hey, let me. You've been delaying it. You've been delaying it. Exactly. Like a poop that you got to take, but you're on a date. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a delay. <laughs> yeah, big delay. So what ended up happening was a couple Transformers, four Transformers blew out. For for those of you who don't know what a transformer is, I was about to say, wait, four transformers came up to your house. Wait a minute, (laughs) I had the street sweeper ready for their ass. Is this? Are you Shia LaBeouf? And is this the first twenty minutes of the Transformers (laughs) franchise? (laughs) Oh shit! (laughs) Did you just meet Megan Fox? (laughs) She tried to fix your car. (laughs) She tried it. She got the work too. Decepticon for life. D four L, you feel me? D four L. Oh, they got it on the face. (laughs) (laughs) Star scream. So uh, sound wave. Get the ass. Um. So anyway, a transformer is basically uh, if you have a a, what is that electrical pole anywhere by your house, if your wiring isn't underground then you probably have an electrical pole. At the top of those electrical poles are these big uh, gray, they look like trash cans, if I could identify them closely as something. Like an old school Oscar the Grouch type trash cans. Mm. Just gray cylinders up there. Four of those things blew up on my street. Terrible. And my entire apartment complex had no electricity whatsoever. So the fucked up part about this is it was only my apartment. I got off work. My girlfriend told me Wendy's saying, yeah, we have no power. I'm like, oh, really? Okay. Um, Well, I've dealt with this before, you know. Yeah, it usually comes back on like an hour, you know. Yeah. We get to the house. It's only our apartment. It's only y'all's? Only us. It's all it's straight pitch black. Everyone else, I'm seeing lights on. I seen somebody playing Fortnite from my window. It was like I, I was jealous. It I was mad. Like shit, I can't I can't do nothing. Then on top of that, the oven's off. There's no hot water. So it became just we couldn't live in here. And then there was a heat wave. We couldn't live in here. And the heat wave made it worse. Yeah. This all happened on Sunday. And this heat wave in L.A. was for the weekend hitting triple digits. So oh, we yeah. toughed it. We toughed it out for the uh, I got a Monday morning because I got off Monday at like 2.30 a.m. Mm-hmm. So I was like, let's just tough it out for now. 
if it cools down, we'll just make the best of it. If not, I'll get us a hotel. Woke up sweating, just mm. in a puddle. And I was like, oh, my God, I got to go shower. Took a shower, cold as fuck. I'm like, oh, my God, nothing's working. Mm-hmm. Tried to play the Switch. Dead. I can't even play my Mario Kart. I can't do Hollow Knight. <laughs> I can't do shit. You know? They're like, oh, no, we're getting a hotel. No no Wi-Fi? Oh, we're getting a hotel. No Wi-Fi? No Switch? <laughs> Nothing. What do you do? What do you do? You die. Huh? You it? Go outside and play with bikes? That's... That's it. And it was crazy. I, my neighbors had their doors wide fucking open, going to sleep. Doors wide open. People just outside. It's like, you ever, if you guys have seen this movie, Crooklyn, the scene where everybody's outside, you know, you got the niggas smoking, no, huffing glue. Oh my God. And people like just running around, shirts off and shit. Yeah, that, that was my apartment. Oh my God. Minus the glue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was fucking crazy. Um, so I was like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm going to. I'm gonna get a hotel. Let, let's get a hotel. I, I can't. This is unlivable. I'm pretty pissed off because it messed up my whole day of remodeling the house. Mm-hmm. So we got a hotel. I forgot it was Labor Day, so surge prices for the oh for the moment of booking. So yeah, that was that was fun, but mm-hmm. it was a nice hotel. It's a hotel I've been meaning to stay at, and finally got to. Like, all right, this is a good hotel. So, you know, it's um we were expected to not have electricity all the way until Wednesday. Luckily, somebody came out on Tuesday and they fixed it up. Yeah. So I was like, all right, perfect. We can head back. So I just wanted to apologize for you guys on the late delay. You know, I know you need your fix. I got you guys. I'm I'm a I'm a dealer who cares. Okay. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I but I mean, you it. know, it's not like we we didn't, you know, effed up too bad or something. I mean, it's, it comes out on Wednesday. It comes out every yeah. Wednesday. Yeah. We didn't tell you a time, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just told you a day, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, that is true. That yeah. is very true. Yeah. No, yeah. So yeah, it's coming out today on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. He's going to get a little late, but, you know, just, just listen. It's going to be there. Listen. Yeah, with us. yeah. O- Open your ears. Open your heart. Exactly. It's 2020, you know? We all going through it. Some worse than others. Exactly. It's terrible. Yeah. So, um, moving on, we are not going to do the, oh, we stream and stream and segment because mm-hmm. of the fact that this podcast is going to be the one about the movie recommendations we gave each other last week and Mm. we're just going to dive into that but before we do before we jump into the pool before let's hit the showers you know okay yeah let's wash up Uh uh-huh yeah let's hit them with some headlines so first one Mm -hmm. travis scott got to deal with mcdonald's okay Mm -hmm. i've seen that Mm -hmm. so you can go ahead fries and the drink exactly you can go ahead and get the Cactus Jack meal for what mm-hmm. is it going around six dollars? Yeah, I like yeah. he calls it the cactus pack. I kind of like that. The cactus pack, yeah. Like, if I was in that meeting, I would be like, That's it, and I'll be so excited. Like, the cactus pack, that. you right after this, I swear to you, I promise you, for God, I'm about to go to McDonald's and ask for the cactus pack. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let me get a cactus pack. And you know, it, we've had this stuff before, it's, it's fries. A drink, a large drink, and a quarter pounder with cheese. No, a quarter pounder. It already has cheese. A quarter pounder with lettuce and bacon, I believe, is the new mm-hmm. toppings for the cactus pack. Yeah. So it's that that just shows how good marketing is. It comes with a sprite too and a, a barbecue sauce. I guess that's his his what he would normally order. Oh, okay. Oh, he dips his fries in a barbecue sauce. I'm know. guessing, yeah. Oh, okay. But yeah, it's just a good like you said, just good marketing and good, yeah. Shit. Good because you know people are just gonna flock there to try just to get a, a Travis Scott burger, even though mm-hmm. it's not nothing crazy. But mm-hmm. Travis Scott has become one of those people that you want to collect the things he makes, like the merch and stuff like that. Apparently, yeah. So um, yeah, I know kids are gonna just go there to buy that just to just to maybe <laughs> put put the moldy burger in a fucking. 
in a little uh, little clear case with a light on it and stuff. It's the Travis Burger, bro. It's a Travis Burger. It's all moldy. Now that I think, now that I think about it, he's he actually made some good moves. He he did the Fortnite thing. Oh yeah, amazing. And exactly. Yeah. Now you're going, and you know that's that's a, a great form, especially if you're trying to get in touch. If your demographic is pro streamers and the, mm-hmm. like the teenagers and shit, mm-hmm. and then you go over to McDonald's and their demographic is strictly the kids. Mm-hmm. For the f- simple fact that they can coerce their parents to go get McDonald's and exactly. shut them up, Th- these are some very good moves. Now that I think about it, McDonald's has raised millions of American families. Let me just tell you that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, you know, you, you, you when your mom or your dad don't want to, like, they can, they got to feed you, and you just want to, sh- you won't shut up. Here, throw this Happy Meal at your face. Right. That's that should be a. Uh, McDonald's commercial. <laughs> throw this happy meal at your face. Yeah, just throw them throw that happy meal at them. Cause you know, you you y'all in the pandemic, you teaching them from home, you tire your kids, they keep yelling. Mm-hmm. Just throw a happy meal in their face, they'll be quiet for 30 minutes, you know? Yeah, there you go. Buy you some time. Do they still give toys and happy meals? Um, I don't think it's year round anymore. Maybe like during Halloween, if there's a, a movie or the whole cactus pack thing. Yeah, they might have a toy. They should have did that. A toy, a little t- Travis Scott little figurine. He already got a little, <laughs> like the rodeo thing. one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, if they done that, I would have bought that. I would have bought two of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah, just for the toy. See, exactly. See, look, it's working on us. So if it's working on us, it'll definitely work for the young children exactly. <laughs> in high school yeah. right now. And yeah, this, see, who this listen is to Travis marketing. Scott? So yeah, I think it's definitely a good deal. He's been making some real good deals lately. Yep. Making that money, money. Get this McDonald's bag real quick. Hey. Me. But you know, let's let's move on to the next one. Let's yeah, go got, to the we, next headline. We got yeah, we got something to talk about with that one. We got something to talk about. So look, listen. Let them have it. Let 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 me let me let me take let me take this, okay? Because I got I got I got qualms. I got emotions. Okay. There you go. Get them. In the this in the third episode of the the Tory Lanes and Megan the Stallion drama. We got another update here on the Ted Bet show. Mm, and you cannot pause this update. You it's can't pause this update. Now listen. Mr. Lanes, as you can as you know, is the person who shot this woman, as was confirmed around two, three weeks ago. And if you didn't, if you didn't hear that, go ahead and watch uh is it episode four of the Ted Net show? It Should is episode uh, three, I want to say. Just just watch all of them, and then you'll find it, you know? Yeah. It's in there. Watch them all. It's a good listen. And actually, don't watch them. Listen to them, because you can't watch them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. Verbs. Uh, Adjectives. There it is. Consternation. Nope. That's no, not now, it. now you lost That's it. not it. That's I not it. Forgot. That is not it. Um, but, yes. So, Miss Tor- Mr. Tory. Apparently, Tory Lanez, right after the shooting happened, that same night slash morning, he apologized. He tried to apologize to her via text. Mm. (sighs) Okay. Mm -mm -mm. That's just one thing, okay? You know, you're going to be like, oh, I'm sorry. um," You know, you're going to type on your phone that I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I shot. I I almost killed. I tried to kill you. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, But the... But the text messages were, and I quote. Now, this is all alleged, by the way. This alleged. is all alleged. Don't There's, don't come for us. Don't come for us. Meg, you can come for me anytime. Meg, yeah, always come. I, we can come on over. I got you. Mm-hmm. But Tori, never in your life. Mr. Daystar. <laughs> um, so, Miss, uh, so Tori is alleged. He sent these alleged texts. Mm-hmm. And he wrote, I know you're probably never going to talk to me again, but mm-hmm. I genuinely want you to know I'm sorry for the bottom of the, from the bottom of my heart. Mm. What? Mm, mm, mm. I know you're never going, probably never going to talk to me again. And then, you know, people say that, like, oh, I know you're going to never talk to me again, but I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Like, they say that in order for them to, I don't know, for you to try to come back to them somehow. Yeah. Because they, they... Knew that you weren't, but you they want you to do the opposite of that, so they mm-hmm. want it's kind of like I don't know, it, 
it's just annoying. Anyway, it is. He gonna he gonna say, yeah, no, you're probably never gonna talk to me again. But I genuinely, genuinely want you to know, I'm sorry from the bottom of my heart. Okay. His, okay. his other text message was, "quote I was just too drunk." What the fuck, sir? You have a firearm and you're drinking, sir. I have around me. Let me let me let me see if I can break this down. I'm not the heaviest and biggest drinkers that anybody probably knows. Mm-hmm. The times I have been too drunk, I have thrown up. Mm-hmm. Woke up somewhere I didn't even know I was at. Okay, okay, okay. Woke up with, and I oh my god, this was one of the best ones. I woke up with thirty. Hooters wings, assorted flavors. Oh, with two big ass things of uh, Sprite. No, oh, you. That's a and that oh yeah, that good night. It was a planned when, night. But yeah, let me let me let you guys know something. When I get drunk, it's a whole different person. Not on no crazy shit, uh-huh. but drunk Edward thinks of future Edward <laughs> and how he's gonna be hungry. <laughs> so I remember that. I don't remember that night, but. You know, two hundred and fifty dollars short and a whole platter of wings <laughs> the next morning. I'm like, hey, I I can't call it. I can't, I can't call I it. I can eat it though. I can. But I'm gonna eat. Show the wings. fuck do that. Yeah, I'm gonna eat these wings though. So I'm just saying that to say that to say this. I've been too drunk before. Mm-hmm. I've been very drunk before. I think we all have. In a yeah, way. I've never known myself. Mm-hmm. Are any of my friends or family to want to mm-hmm. cause harm mm. to someone in that extent? I've known people to get into fights, but not as in like, oh, I'm going to instigate this fight. It's just like, oh, the bro's being shoved. I'm about to swing at this nigga. Right. I've never known someone to get their firearm and shoot at another person, let alone a woman. Let alone a woman. Like that, if that's what you are, Tori, Mr. Lanes, if that's how you're like when you're too drunk, mm-hmm. maybe you should stop drinking. White Claw is a great alternative. <laughs> Just have great two of them. Yeah. Hey, I mean, hey, I mean, the man is only five, too, so you don't know what happens when he gets one shot. I mean, he probably had two shots. And then that then his, you know, his his mild stature can't can't handle all that alcohol. So. It could be that. It could be that. Two shot Tory. That's what they call him. Two shot Tory. Yeah, because when he takes two shots, he's gone. He is out of here. Yeah. That's oh terrible. my god. So yeah, he was just too drunk. Um, another text said none of, none of the le- none of this shit should have never happened, and I can't change what I did. I just feel horrible. Mm-hmm. That's another thing that that people do that. They try to make them the victim now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, like, oh, I feel horrible. He tells her that so she can now start feeling sad for him. Yeah, that's my problem. And then, with that is and then you know, adding on to where, mm-hmm. oh, you're not going to talk to me ever again. I know that, but I'm sorry type shit. Like, all those two together are just a ploy for you to, A, forgive him or mm-hmm. go back to him or, like, you know, try to talk it out or whatever. Yeah. No, fuck that. I don't, I get it. You you have every right to feel horrible. You know, people make mistakes unless he did this two or three other times and that's a fucking choice. But mm-hmm. people make mistakes. My thing is, don't, you don't have to let her know you feel horrible. Because, yeah, that's going to guilt trip her. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she already said in the beginning, like, you guys have no idea how much as black women we hold back to protect those we love. Yep. I was just like, don't, bro, don't even, don't even tell her that you feel horrible and shit. Just, if you're gonna apologize, I, I don't. I can't think of a good apology for this. Mm-hmm. Good enough, but I, I apologize. My bad. I am yeah. super sorry. I guess I was too drunk. I'm it ain't. Sorry. It ain't. You can't do that over blue text bubbles. I can tell you that right now. Yeah, I can tell you that right now. Sorry for shooting you. LOL. Yeah. That. What the fuck? Like. That's all I heard. What if she died? Who you texting? Yeah. Who you texting then? Yeah. Her friend. Exactly. Hairstylist, Justin, the bodyguard. Oh, I feel so bad. She's dead. I feel so yeah. bad. Like what? <sighs> Stop this! And it's like you caused this, nigga. What you talking about? Exactly. 
you're you're the reason. This is all you. All on you, bro. But, you know, it... all we can do is just send, like we've been saying, send Meg love and light. That's all you yes. need. Meg, stream, stream WAP. Let let her get this money. Give her these coins. Exactly. And Meg, if you're listening to this, I want to send you some more than just love and positivity. I got some chicken parm in the oven right now, and I would love to send that to you Mm -hmm. from my kitchen to my couch. I just need your ass (laughs) sitting in my on my couch. You can take either side too. It's a great couch. Very good couch. I got some chicken parm. Got chicken parm. It's such a good introductory introductory dish. Chicken Mm -hmm. parm. Mm-hmm. Get some chicken parm, parm, Meg. You, Get you a little chicken say, parm. Yeah, come on. Arugula salad. How many niggas you know they got arugula salad? Arugula. Arugula. That sounds like homegirl from down the street. Arugula. Yeah, she was named after it. <laughs> you know, people name their kids after the things they can't have. Yep, like a fucking arugula. Couldn't afford a car, so you name your daughter Alexis. Mm. You know, it's just Kanye quotes everywhere. I'm it's just Kanye. Like, it's, yeah. it's just what Kanye. I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, y'all. Okay? I must be Goku, because I'm just saying. Oh, wait a minute. Exactly. You gotta You gotta shoot. You might have done did something. Yeah. You, look at that. To the anime fans out there, I want to thank y'all for watching. Y'all get that. That was for y'all. That was for y'all. <laughs> you know. That was for y'all. That, that was for y'all. But all right, let, let's move on. Let's, yeah, let's um, hit it. Let's let's hit it. Let's get right to the meat of it. Now, as y'all know, last week we all we assigned ourselves some movies. Mm-hmm. I assigned Edward five movies. Edward assigned me five movies. Yep. And we had this week to watch them. Yep. Um. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why our podcast was delayed too, because Edward didn't have no power to watch his movies. Yeah. I had two more movies left to watch, y'all. Exactly. Shit was crazy. So we got we got opinions. We watched them all. Mm-hmm. Edward, give me a quick overall. What do you think of the movies that I assigned you? What did you think? And I'll tell you mine. Emotions were everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, you gave me. It, it was good. I liked all of the movies. Mm-hmm. They. I've liked. Um, I liked how they were directed. I loved the the shots. Um, it was just some I was happy, some I was fucking sad, <laughs> and some it was just like I was just like curious as to where where the main character is going with this, mm-hmm. and some was just I was flabbergasted, schmoogly blonde. That's the mm-hmm. word. schmoogly blonde. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I've heard but, what about you? What about the five that I recommended for you? How you feel about those? You know, I was I was really I enjoyed all of them. I enjoyed all the movies. They were all good movies. I enjoyed some more than others, definitely, but I enjoyed them all. All right, that's what's up. And they were, yeah, they were all really good. And um, some of the movies, some of the movies that I, everyone has seen before, and I'm like, I haven't seen it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it was it was good. I loved it a lot, and I'm I want to do this again. I can't. Can't wait yeah. for the next one, especially with like you can do it with like TV shows or oh albums, yeah, um, just any form of mis- of little entertainment. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You can do that. Exactly. By the way, the best record ever is uh, the Beatles. Why don't we do it on the road? Why don't we do it in the road? That's, that's it. Right I think there. that's on the White Album, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. It's on Jay Z's Black Album too. Really. No. Oh, I was gonna say, really? <laughs> Jay Z trying to sample that would be a fire sample. Oh my god! Why don't we do it in the road? Uh, get on that. Get a get amen from the congregation. <laughs> Somebody get thug on that on that sample. Oh shit! That would be a good sample though. But um, you want to start with the with the movies, or did you want me to start? How, how? Yeah, I can start. What I was thinking we can do is do like one each. So like I start with one, then you start the next one, then I okay do a little interchanging. So the first movie that I watched on mm. that night, well, I think it was Thursday, Thursday night, Friday night, one of them, um, was I watched Watchmen. 
mm. for the first time. Mm-hmm. Now, as you, if you didn't know, Watchmen is a superhero movie about um, retired, I would say retired superheroes in an alternate uh, United States universe, mm-hmm. where if, it's like a universe where superheroes were a known thing in like the 30s and 20s. Mm-hmm. And um, around that time, uh, Nixon came into office and he, I think something happened. There was an event or something where superheroes like kind of caused a lot of damage. Um, and so he like wrote a law or something like that to, in order for, to ban superheroes pretty much. So they all lived in hiding going back to modern America. They all lived in hiding and they all had to, you know, figure out a way to, you know, just to take care of themselves. I mean, people were going a lot of, a lot of people holding on to the past. A lot of people, um, you know, still doing their superhero duties. <laughs> mm-hmm. But it was just a, I liked it a lot because it was just a fresh take on just the superhero genre. Mm-hmm. It was, it's rated R as fuck. First of all, that's the thing that super surprised me like all the time, the whole movie. Yeah. It's so rated R. I didn't expect all the, the sex, I didn't expect all the violence. I didn't expect half of that, honestly. There was so and, much blood. And that came out in um what 07? Um, I think it came out. When did Watchmen come out? Uh, 09, 2009. Yeah. So we Yeah, 11 years ago. And yeah, it was already. I mean, you talk about Deadpool being the first rated R movie. No. No, Deadpool ain't got nothing on this rated R movie. Holy shit. Fucking prison scene. Yeah, the prison scene where he chopped this man, these men's. Oh my God, limbs! Anyways, <laughs> I, I can't spoil too much of the movie. So yes, y'all gotta y'all gotta go watch that movie. Y'all would enjoy it. Go watch Watchmen. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but no, yeah, it was really good. I like the um, I like the grittiness of it, just like DC, because you know how DC makes their movies so dark, mm-hmm. and it, it works. It's for so, some, uh, so dark, but yet so vibrant. Mm-hmm. As <laughs> a coworker of mine once said. <laughs> But yeah, really, I didn't expect that all that sex and gore. Mm-hmm. I did not expect that at all. Um, I do want to talk about real quick, Mister Doctor Manhattan over here. That he's a he ain't got time for these this. He ain't got time for it. He don't. That's all I gotta say. You don't got time for these trivial man. I ain't got time to eat you out right now. Yeah, I got stuff to do. He you do. Know what I'm saying? Like... That that man is cra- that man's terrible. <laughs> Uh, and then he, the man is just naked the whole movie. I yeah. don't get he just it, this should be some super serious. Oh, it's the penultimate battle to save the world, and he just come out here slinging, mm-hmm. ball, doing the ball Johnson dance. Foo, foo, <laughs> foo. That's what he was doing the whole movie. I mean, shit. Johnson going the other way, balls going the other way. Foo, <laughs> foo, foo. That's what he was. Oh my god. <laughs> He's God. He's a, yeah, yeah, he's a God, all right. But you just put some, put a little thing on, sir. Where's his little, where's his underwear that he sometimes wears? Damn. <laughs> he was just out here slanging it, hanging down. Oh, man. That... Oh, my God. But yeah, that was good. I like that one a lot. I definitely enjoyed that. Um, so yeah, yeah. Y'all definitely watch Watchmen mm-hmm. if, you, if you ever come across it. Question Who's your favorite character? That's a good question. Um, I'll give you two. Two. Who are your two favorite characters? Who are my two favorite characters? Yeah. I mean, I like the owl guy. I kind of liked him because he was more of the kind of the emotional center of the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked him a lot. Um, I guess Rorschach. Mm-hmm. Because he was he was he was near. First of all, he was a narrator and. He was out here killing people, <laughs> and it was very entertaining to watch. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd probably say those two. Okay, Doctor Manhattan was cool. He, I like his powers a lot, but he's just slanging too much dick for me. And yeah, he trying. He is kind of an asshole, <laughs> but no, yeah, the movie, uh, the movie as a whole was great. It was a okay, great movie. that's good to know right there. Well, that's some good shit. All right. So what was what was your first movie ever? What was the first movie you watched? The first one I watched was Hot Rod. Oh, Young Goat, Young Goat. 
Hot Rod is a comedy film for those of you that don't know, starring Andy Samberg. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, and, and the Lonely Island. Can't forget the and, Lonely yeah, Island. and the Lonely Island. If you don't know about this movie, like I didn't, I recommend you give it a good watch. This this movie is funny as fuck. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's about you know a, a kid, well, a guy, a man who's a stunt man and. His stepfather gets very sick and needs a, what was it, a liver? No, a heart, I think. I forgot what it was because I kept I laughing. Think it, like, I think it was a new heart. Yeah, okay. So they needed to raise $50,000. They needed $50,000 for the heart. So the the guy he the guy who's a stuntman, Andy Samberg's character, he starts putting on shows to do stunts. Stunts are funny as fuck. <laughs> this shit. and then to get this he's only trying to help his stepdad get a new heart so uh-huh. he can beat his ass yeah that's the that's that's the, <laughs> that's, that's, the, the that's the main thing yeah he's only he doing this just so he can fight him yeah he does whoop his not, ass so you can live and have longevity and happiness this mm-hmm. is no i've lost every match against you mm-hmm. so you don't have my permission to die until <laughs> i whoop your ass and i'm gonna get that heart for you and I'm going to beat your ass. <laughs> then you go do some stunts. Um, Danny McBride is in. Danny is actually my favorite character. Danny McBride? Yeah, because there, um, there was a scene where they did a stunt. They tried to jump over this guy's van, and it didn't work out. So the guy came out like, what the fuck are y'all doing? Danny McBride's character just starts wailing on this dude, mm-hmm. beating his ass, throwing a trash can at him. And he's just, whoa! I've been drinking uh, green tea all day. I got all the energy. I'm hopped up. <laughs> drinking green tea all day. <laughs> his ass. Oh, I, I, I'm like, green tea? That's, mm-hmm. that's your choice of drink for energy? I guess so. <laughs> that shit was crazy. Dan, Dan and Greid always got some off-kilter lines that he says in like his movies. Yeah. It'll be hilarious. Those, oh my God. Oh, and Bill Hader. There, there's a scene. I'm not gonna ruin the movie for y'all. Oh yes, oh man. When Andy Sandberg tries to get a girl into the group to join the stuntman group because they all got jobs, and he's trying to uh-huh. get this girl he likes in the group. He does an introduction to him, and he's all like, "I'm the guy that does the stunts, and I party." Bill Hader. He's all like, "I built the ramps, and I also like to party." Hmm. And then Andy just says, "No, there can only be." Me as the party guy. Okay, you guys get that? Daniels are like, I got it. Cool. He builds, I film, you do the stunts and you party. Yeah, but I also party. <laughs> so there's a like, all right, so who's partying? Right. Who's working? Exactly. That whole skit. It's 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 like an SNL skit. It's an hour long SNL skit. Exactly. The whole yeah. movie, yeah. yeah. I definitely recommend it. Um falling. Lots of falling, funny ass falling. There's riots that's breaking out from them just walking down the street. They try to make it look cool. It's just nothing but SNL. Oh, yeah. That would be like towards the end of the movie. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck just happened? Do you remember the Bill Hader scene where he, he takes acid <gasps> in the um in the bowling alley or something like that? And he like cuts himself with a saw or something? I don't oh, know. yeah. He was... um. They was building something in the garage, I think, mm-hmm. at that moment. Yeah, and then he cut his fucking self. That yeah. is crazy. These niggas are too much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Hot Rod is hilarious. Yeah, I honestly thought you saw that way before. I never saw it. I've heard of it. I just never saw it. And the Cool Bean song. Cool Bean. Cool, cool, cool beans. Cool, 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 cool beans. Cool beans. Cool, cool. cool, cool. Cold bit. It's it's a good show. It's very funny. A good movie. It's very funny. Very comical. Oh, yeah. But um, go ahead. What, what's your what's your next movie that you want to talk about, Ted? So I headed up. You know, I'm watching y- your movies. You know, mm-hmm. the first one was good. It was a knock out the park. I was like, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So then I was like, let me see what he got for me. So then I watch Focus, Ooh. starring Will Smith and Margot Robbie. Mm-hmm. Now when it, when you when you first uh. You know, assign me this. I was like, "What? Mm-hmm. This movie? Mm-hmm. Okay, I guess." 
So I turned it on, and I was honestly when I first turned it on, I wasn't expecting much really. Mm-hmm. The first ten five minutes of the movie, I was like, "Oh, okay, mm-hmm. this, this is what we're gonna do." Mm-hmm. But as the movie progressed, yep, there we go. Oh snap! <laughs> there was some shit that happens in this movie, and it's you know why I like it. Um, first of all, Focus, starring Mar- Margot Robbie and Will Smith. Mm. Is a movie about uh, it's about con men, pretty much. Will Smith, he's a he's a vet. He's been conning people for years and years. Yeah. And uh, Margaret Robbie is a new con artist, I guess. She was like born in the foster system. She was saying, and you know, mm-hmm. she's looking for opportunities to you know up her up herself. You know, big ups herself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, yeah, they start teaching. Um, Will Smith starts teaching Margaret Robbie tricks and trades. Um, soon they start, you know, getting start kissing. <laughs> Ew, I'm kissing, <laughs> and they start getting a little linked up, a little romantically involved. Mm-hmm. Uh, Will Smith ends up, you know, doing something kind of fucking her over, and some years later, class, and they come back again, and shenanigans ensue. Yeah. So when I, so yeah, when I watched the movie at first, I wasn't expecting nothing from it. Mm-hmm. But as things went on, and like there's a scene where here they're they're betting in the, at a Super Bowl on some dumb fucking bets, like trivial bet. I'm like screaming at my TV. Yeah. Will Smith, stop. That's Will my Smith. favorite scene. But like the way it turns out, you're like, oh my god, he's Will Smith's the smartest man on the planet. Yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah, everything was planned out. Every single detail was planned out. It was crazy. So yeah, you gotta watch it. Honestly, watch it almost for that scene alone. Yeah, the Super Bowl scene. That shit. Oh mm, my god! That song but... that was playing. Hmm. I don't. I, I don't want to re- ruin it for people, but yeah, don't ruin. Yeah, don't ruin it for the children. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Y'all need to watch this shit. This shit is crazy. It's great. I'm glad you liked it. You know. Yeah, I liked that. I liked that because yeah, like I said, I didn't. Um, I didn't expect nothing, you know, from it. I didn't expect it to be so too crazy. But when I was watching, I was writing notes. The first note I wrote was Margot Robbie bad. <laughs> Margot Robbie bad. <laughs> the first thing I wrote. I think I wrote that in the first 10 minutes of the movie. <laughs> like, man, Margot Robbie bad is not the shot you should got you guys should be looking for. Focus in the dress. Margot exactly. Robbie. Bad. But um, and even the ending, you don't see the end coming because you, it's a con movie, so you think it, you think you see it coming because it's like, oh, there's gonna be a twist. Mm-hmm. There's a twist, and then yeah. there's like two twists at the end, and then there's another twist, and then there's a little another little twist at the at the top. So, and that's how you take a sip of your beer. There it is, twist it up. There's a lot of twisties, a lot of a lot of pretzels. Yeah, they're conning you at the end. Yeah, you're the con. Exactly, you're the con. Yeah, it's a fucking Black Mirror episode. <laughs> That's good. I'm glad you liked it. You know, it, it was. Uh, I gave you a. If I'm going to relate this to Pokemon, you know, I gave oh you a god. Chikorita and you evolved it into a Charizard. Oh my god. Nothing but facts spoken here on the Ted Ned. Chik- Chikorita. I had no idea that's what Charizard was. Chikorita, right there. Jesus mm-hmm. Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Gave yeah. you a heart plug, you turned it into the chicken enoki soup at Olive Garden. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing but facts spoken here at the Ted Nash. What Church. the hell is that? You know, that's, that's, that's life. That is oh life. Oh, my God. But, yeah. So, yeah, Focus was really good. So, what what did you watch your second night, Edward? Oh. Me... You watch Hot Rod. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to go. And say on my second night, I watched Jojo Rabbit. Oh, oh, you watched, you watched great film. Jojo motherfucking rabbit. Mm. Let me, um, first of all, Mm. I did not know what the fuck this movie was about. Mm -hmm. The title alone made me kind of cringe. Yeah, the title alone, you don't even know it, Yeah. And the the director being what is his name Taiko Waititi? Yeah, Taiko Waititi. Yep. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, 
Didn't he direct Justice League? No. Thor. Was it Thor? Oh, yeah. It was Ragnarok. Thor. There we go. There and we go. he had, um, he was definitely had a lot to do with the Avengers. He was all in that. Okay, cool. So, and he played, he played Korg in Thor Ragnarok. The rock, really? Dude. The rock guy? Yeah. Uh huh. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, I didn't know that. That's what's up. So, going into this, I, I didn't know what to expect because I was like, okay, this guy did a, a superhero movie. Mm hmm. I don't know what he gonna do with this. So this this whole let me break it down for you guys. Jojo Rabbit is about a ten year old boy who is a Nazi fanatic. He adores Adolf Hitler. Stay with me. Stay with me. Please don't jump off. <laughs> stay with me, guys. Stay with me. Don't, I, don't I, cancel I, us yet. Yeah. Don't please don't cancel us yet. It, it gets very good. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he he's a fanatic for the Third Reich, Adolf Hitler, all of that invasion of Poland. He he's for all of it. He's 10 years old, okay? I don't want you guys to think it's a grown man. 10-year-old kid. So, he um he's joining this, uh what is it, like a Boy Scout group? And they're kind of training them to be like young Nazi soldiers. Yeah, like Hitler's youth. That's what they used to call yeah. it. Yeah, there we go. So, it's... At first, I was all like, oh, no, this is going to. Oh, yeah, this director, he's done. He's done a, a comedy about a Nazi. Right. Germ, German occupied Poland. Like, no, no, this ain't going. No, this no, this ain't going to work. So it's a good movie. It's a comedy. If you can believe that it just talks about like how he it shows the views of Hitler and everything that was going on in World War II through the eyes of a 10-year-old kid who knew nothing other than Nazi propaganda and Hitler. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's like I'm kind of making a mockery of it, too, because, you know, yeah. all the people, like all the generals and all the, you know, people that were in, that were Nazis and stuff like that, they were, you know, had these certain views on what Jews were and what, they, yeah. like they were, it was like all kind of ridiculous almost. <laughs> like, <laughs> like they, they had, oh, they put their horns up at night or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it was always this weird shit. I know, but it's very, I don't know, it's very, it's like literally talking shit about Nazis, like shitting on Nazis. Yeah, so I recommend it to you guys. Um, So the, the interesting part about this movie, I ain't gonna go too deep into this. I'm just tell y'all like the, I guess the, um, what is it? The What's that French word? The coup de twist? I'm gonna the call coup it the twist. twist. Yeah, coup de twist. You know the 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 what is that other word? Cream freesh. There we go. The cream freesh of this movie. Love it. You know this podcast. Oh my god. By cream freesh. I put that shit on everything. <laughs> cream freesh. Go get you some nationwide. Um. So the cream freesh of this is this kid lives with his mom. His father's all fighting the war effort for Germany. And, you know, he, he's in love with Hitler. He loves Hitler so much so that he has an imaginary friend who's his version of what Hitler is like. Yeah. Guys, please don't take this the wrong way, but Hitler was funny as fuck. He was my mm -hmm. character in this. Mm -hmm. So imagine his surprise when he finds out there's a Jewish girl that is living in the attic of his house. Mm -hmm. And, you know, his mom knows all of it she's the one that's helping her so it, it it gets very like it seems cringeworthy like oh no they added the jew and all that i start thinking it's going like and frankish like oh no they're, they're gonna kill her i can't watch this but they Tycho he actually pulled this off because mm -hmm. on my notes first thing i wrote the mom is scarlett johansson <laughs> Um, second thing, Hitler was funny. And the third thing I noticed, the mom, whenever she's around the kid, Ted, mm -hmm. this is the thing I liked about it. This is why I'm glad you recommended it to me. Whenever the mom and uh, Jojo were out, mm -hmm. she was always elevated higher than him. Yep. Like, and she, I was wondering if you would notice that. Yeah, she was always like. She's walking on this wall while he's like doing a sidewalk, and uh -huh. the way the frame is shot, it's like he, Take it's like shoes. She's, 
Yeah, you see her shoes, and you get this whole thing of like she's not a higher power than him, but he looks up to her, and she's more of a, a wisdom, a wise person. Mm-hmm. And she she tries to make she tries to make everything better, at least for him. Tries to make light of the things. I just love the way that they did that. Um, what what else? Let me see my other notes. What I really also got from the movie too is that. It honestly kind of, you know, has a because of uh, whatever we're going through in this country right now, mm-hmm. because we're still going through some racism stuff yeah. as we speak. But it kind of made a sense of hope at the end for me that it's going to be the kids right now that are going to get rid of this shit. That's going to change because yeah, because at the towards the end of the movie, he starts to realize that this is all bullshit. Yeah. Like what they've been, she he's was learning from the Jewish girl, and mm. you know he's like, wait, they don't have horns coming out their heads at night or something. <laughs> they don't. I like that she was fucking with him though. She, yeah, I know. Oh, she was so funny too. She yeah, was messing with him. Each other. Yeah, we could talk to each other in our you know little Jew language or something. Uh-huh. Oh my god. But yeah, he did come to that realization. Like this. Yeah, is- that this is all bullshit, and this mm-hmm. is you know run by. You know, everyone thinks adults are supposed to be, you know, the end all be all. You yeah. want to be an adult when you're a kid. And you kind of realize that adults are just shitty. They're yeah. shittier than children. Fuck. Yeah, they're worse. Because they can, they got power now. They're, they're exactly. horrible. Exactly. One of my favorite scenes. Um, Let me go to my notes. Let me flip. You know, you guys hear that? Notes. Mm, paper. Call the New York Post to call me. I write on paper. Yeah, right there. They heard it. Okay. That's how you get your job right there, Ted. Anyway, <laughs> so my favorite scene is um, when the kid with uh, Yorkie. Was it York? Or, no, it was Yorkie. Um, oh, with the, the glasses? Kid, with the glasses, yeah. Yeah, he's my favorite character. He came and told him, like, oh, we don't. I don't know what we're going to do. Like, Hitler's not. Hitler's gone. Jojo's face was just so blank. Mm-hmm. He's like, Wait, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, he, he's dead. He's done for. And when he told Jojo that, you can just see his world falling apart. Like, the man I idolized is out. He has a weakness. This man was perfection to me, and he offed himself? Like, what the fuck? Then shortly after, you got Rebel Wilson giving everybody fucking machine guns and grenades and going out there to fight. So they, I like that they did that. They gave some, like, real drama and, like, a realization for Jojo that he's out. Like he's literally dead. The person I idolize is dead more than my father. I idolize this man and he's dead. Mm-hmm. And then right after you get rebel Wilson, given um, Yorkie a fucking uh, goddamn <laughs> a PKM from call of duty to go shoot at the American. Oh my God. That is so putting funny a on another kid's back and pulling. Yeah. Him just like, go, go, just go out there. Go out there. Give him a hug. Oh my God. They're so, so funny. I love how he balanced that. The whole drama with comedy. I feel like he was treading on some very thin ice, but I think Tycho did a very great job on this. Oh yeah. The way he did it. Yeah. Good shit. Good, very good stuff. I recommend it. Yeah, it was good. It was really good. I, yeah, I love that movie. This is one of the last great movies I watched. Yeah. So, yeah, it was really good. With the grenade. Mm. <laughs> I don't want to ruin it. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. Y'all need to go watch Jojo Rabbit. Oh, yes. Go ahead and watch that. Oh, and they also reveal why he's called Jojo Rabbit. That was another thing that I Oh, yeah. About. Uh-huh. I like that. Yeah. That's funny. I need to figure that out. But, you know, Onward. Not the Disney movie. Mm-hmm. Onward. So what was your next movie that you saw, Ted? Okay, so my little next movie, you know, that I had to watch. Mm-hmm. It was pretty good. I know I kind of liked it. Mm. Um, It was 310 to Yuma. There you go. Now, 310 to Yuma, if you guys didn't know, it's kind of like an old Western movie. Mm-hmm. Starring Christian Bale and Russell Crowe. And Arthur Morgan. Exactly. <laughs> I was thinking about Arthur Morgan and Red Dead Redemption like the whole movie, pretty much. Yeah. Um, but what what I think, and we were talking about this after I watched it too. I don't remember watching like Russell Crowe movies like that. He's the um he's the goat. He's the 
the Bill Russell to Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hanks, mm-hmm. Michael Jordan. <laughs> you know, he did it first. Oh my god. Yeah, I haven't. I don't know why I haven't really watched that many. Bill, I mean Bill Russell. Now you got me saying Bill Russell. <laughs> um, any Russell Crowe movies? I don't remember. I can't remember any. I mean, you gave me two of them, mm-hmm. um, and I can't really remember the ones that I have watched. I don't know, but yeah, it's an old Western movie, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Um, it's about Russell Crowe, who's an outlaw named Ben Wade. Mm-hmm. You know, out here running the town. You know, stealing carriages or you no know, chariots, as they call them. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, Sorry, I have to crack my finger, and it's all in Arizona too, which is very, very <laughs> topical. Because, <laughs> like, the town of Bisbee that's still there, really. I think I've been to Bisbee, yeah. Uh, and then that made me guess I, I got it like 310 to Yuma, Yuma, Arizona. Yuma is a totally whole thing in Arizona, mm-hmm. so that that was a pleasant surprise. Oh, all right. <laughs> But yeah, the story the story really is about um Christian Bale who's a retired um Civil War vet. He was in the Civil War, he had his leg blown off, blown off and he was a rancher. But he owes money to I don't know who it is he owes money to, Hollander, I just remember that name. Uh, um, I think that was the guy's name, the debtor's name. Yeah, he uh, he basically owed money to them and they were just burning down his house and barn making him trying to get money. I think that was in Red Dead Redemption. I feel like that was literally a mission in Red Dead Redemption. I think it's at the end too, where you become um, John Marston. Yeah. Yeah. You owe money. Somebody owes money to somebody. So you burn down his barn. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Well, his thing was the government uh, betrayed him. Yeah. Red Dead is uh, about John Marston hunting down the rest of the uh, gang. Mm-hmm. turning them in to the feds or the government, whatever you want to call them. And then in the end, yeah, they betray you and they, they burn your shit down and shoot you up. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's basically like we got to get, they capture Ben Wade, they capture Russell Crowe. Mm-hmm. And it's just a group of people trying to get him on the 310 train to Yuma. Yeah. Which would um, take him to jail pretty much. Yep. Um, it was it was good. I I liked it a lot. Get slumped in Yuma. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just had to say that. Getting slumped. <laughs> yeah, he, um, it was a good movie. I think, I mean, personally, I think it was, I don't want to say the weakest out of all five, but it was the one I guess I enjoyed the least, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. I okay. enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed it. It was good. Gotcha. Um, I liked the... Um, Kind of the shit at the end where he, everything was kind of coming to the head and Christian Bale mm-hmm. was like explaining like, you know, how he really uh, got his leg blown off and, you know, what, um, like kind of connecting with uh, Russell Crowe a little bit. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it made him kind of like regret, you know, certain things that he did or whatever. And kind of him, he got inspired by Christian Bale's um, son that he wasn't you know all bad that he wasn't just always you know a piece of shit all yeah. the outlaw all the time yeah and um no yeah it was good i liked it i think really it is i don't i'm not a western movie fan i guess because i think i've seen tombstone mm-hmm. i've seen this one Never seen um tombstone. this is probably my favorite one i guess i've seen tombstone it was okay i remember well i was really really very young <laughs> so i don't really know but no, this one was good. I like this a lot. It was a good movie. Mm, okay, I feel you. Um, I can understand that though. Not being a big fan of western movies, uh, they kind of have a, a slow start because the only western movies I have seen was Three Ten to Yuma and Open Range. Those are the only ones I can think of right mm. now. Hmm. Uh oh the 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 what was it? Not the Hateful Eight. Um, the other one with Denzel, the Serious Six or some shit like that. Um, uh, wait, not Hateful Eight, Fateful Seven. Yeah, it was like there was a, a there yeah, was, there was there was three movies. It was like that, Magnificent Seven or something like that. Yeah, there we go. And like Chris Pratt was in it. That's like the third Western movie. I oh, I mean, I yeah, I didn't see that movie. It was a lot of people in that movie, right? Yeah, that one it was cool. I don't think it's better than um Three Ten to Yuma because mm-hmm. I just first of all. That cave scene. Oh, when he was stabbing him? 
<laughs> you wake up to a nigga getting slumped. <laughs> to a stabbed in his <laughs> neck. Bow, bow, bow. You wake up and right all you hear. <laughs> I'm just thinking giving him the work. Oh, yeah, he was no, he was giving him work. That was oh, funny. Man, I didn't know that Yuma was in Arizona though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's in Arizona. Oh. The whole like is it county or is it a city? It's something. It's there. It's there. It's hot and it's there. I feel you. I feel you. Um Damn, now I kind of want to go to you in Arizona. But okay, um, let me move on to the movie I saw. Mm-hmm. Yeah, give me your give me your third movie that you saw. That clinch you... in the third spot. Clinching, clinch it up. You know, which is also known as the um small forward for you uh, football fanatics. Football fanatics. Yeah, small forward. You know, nothing but oh facts. Talking on the Ted Ned show. Oh my god, nothing but facts. If you would have just said basketball, you would have been right. Mm-hmm. It would have been right, you know, but that's the wrong to ball. Say that's the wrong ball. So, mention the third spot is uh the movie dismissed. Oh, dismissed. Yeah, this this movie is starring Dylan Sprouse. Dylan Sprouse. Dylan Sprouse. Yeah. <laughs> and, I feel like <laughs> I feel like that's gonna happen every time someone says one of them. Like, is it Cole Sprouse? Coast <laughs> or no Dylan's Sprouse. Dylan Sprouse? Yeah, it's them. So <laughs> if you guys don't know who Dylan Sprouse is, he plays Oscar on Shark Tales. Okay. Great. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm he, he plays Oscar <laughs> on Shark Tales. <laughs> None but facts spoken here on the Ted Ned Show. None, None but facts. facts. None but facts. So on a serious note, he plays um Zach from the uh critically acclaimed show, critically acclaimed hall of fame made super goat the sweet life of zach and cody yeah so he you know if you guys watch that on uh it, it was a it was a good show that i think it started the upstart money for the company of disney when i think they, so like they haven't gotten far but they're, they they're getting gotten, there yeah that was their first hit right that there was- we go yeah right there so you know it gave them their first couple hundred so he stars in that and if any of you guys know that show, you know that he was, what was he, the the smart one or was he the wild one? No, he was the wild one. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah so Dylan Sprouse, yeah, he's the wild one. Gotcha. So, yeah, he's the wild one. And, you know, up 10 years later, he plays <laughs> this, this high school kid in the movie Dismissed. And, well, the whole, the whole movie is about this teacher. Mm-hmm. And his student, really, he's just the teacher and the student. That's pretty much. Dilemma. Yeah, that's pretty much the the movie right there. So when the teacher gets this new transfer student, Dylan Sprouse, mm-hmm. he takes a liking to him. He's the only one that's actually talking, receiving the information. Mm-hmm. You know, he's um, he's 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 working. He's bonding with the teacher. I like to think in the beginning. Because everybody, the teacher was just left hanging every time he asked a question. Exactly. <laughs> Dylan Sprouse came in. He was like, oh, no, cool. Othello, yeah, that's that's my nigga. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's not the poison in the ear, man? Oh, okay, cool. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Got you. So it gets to a point where the teacher finds that this kid is very intellectual, very talented, and very cool. But yep. when he turns in a, a paper about Iago, who is the antagonist of the Othello play uh yeah sure yeah he has a different view of iago being more of a hero than a villain so i don't want to ruin too much but he kind of gets a a b plus oh not a b plus you don't give dylan sprouse a b plus apparently oh yeah no, 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 no off the rails there i'm gonna be honest with you ted there's nothing that I dissected from this movie, it was <laughs> this. You're doing all this over a grade, bro. Like you, you ain't even a senior. Like you, no, he was a senior. Um, you, it's not that. Pro, it's not that problematic. Mm-hmm. Every other class gave him an A plus. Yep. But then you know, final report card comes A plus, A plus, A plus, A plus, F. Oh, F. That's when it's like. 
That's the yeah. whole. That's when the movie changes. Yeah, this, this shit it becomes a horror movie. Yeah, it went from like I don't know a walk to remember. <laughs> you know, I don't even know much about that movie. I just know it ain't a horror movie. I know it's so, not a horror movie. It went to a walk to remember to see no evil. <laughs> Starring Kane? Yes. This nigga was in your house. Oh, yeah. that, that, that's how it went. Yeah, it went real dark, real quick. Um, it was good. I like I like his manipulation tactics. He was definitely a sociopath. Yes, definitely. Um, but it was just it, like it's a good movie. It's just all over a grade, bro. Mm-hmm. Out of all the movies, though, it was my it was the least interesting to me, mm-hmm. only because it started off a bit slow. Yes, it is. But, it does start slow. Yeah. Yeah. When they get to the third act, enter Zach. No, oh, yeah. And he threatening people like the the shit he said to the basketball player about talking in class. Oh yeah. Bro, I say what I want when I want. Well, how about I th- jab my pen into your uh fucking vocal cords, bro? You you should have just head up that man right and there. Staple your tongue to the roof of your mouth. And Come like, whoa, on, whoa, what's the fuck? Brush. Hold on, yeah, you got to fight him now. Exactly, bro, it's a fight. So it's a good one. It's on Hulu. Be sure to check that out, y'all. On the Go Hulu, and, yeah. Mess up your childhood uh shows and their actors in your mind. Go ahead and do that because I can't unsee what he was doing this. Mm-mm. 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 Matt could have killed Ashley Tisdale at any moment in the oh sweet life of Zach and Cody. That's crazy. But you know, moving on, going going to you, Ted, going back to you. Let's pass it back to you. Like they pass- do this. <laughs> Passing it back to me, hitting it, hit the forehand at me. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, so what was the for or the fourth movie that I watched mm-hmm. that you assigned me was uh was Gladiator. Now I did I posted that I never had never really seen this movie and I got so many replies saying like what? You never seen saw Gladiator? What do you mean? And yeah, I'd never seen I had never seen it until now. And so yeah, I wanted to I wanted to watch it and it was you assigned it to me definitely and I had an excuse to watch it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was really good. I I get it. You know, it was made in 2000, 20 years. Yeah. 20 years later. I get it now. <laughs> yeah. It, no, it was a really, really good movie. The um, uh, Russell Crowe did a good job. I get why Joaquin Phoenix won that. I think he won the Oscar. Yeah, uh, uh, I believe so. And I kind of get it because he was a conniving little sm- smarmy little fucking worm. Weirdo. Like- yeah, he was a fucking worm. And all that shit with him and his sister and all that, yeah, he he did a good job playing the character. Yeah, but he was a little worm. Oh my god! Exactly. Did you um uh when I first watched that movie, I was in it for the whole fighting and all that. Uh huh. But then I had rewatched it a while back, and I noticed something. Um, Joaquin Phoenix character, what was it? Commodus. Com Commodity, yeah, Com Commodus. Yeah. He showed up to the war late. Yeah. Oh, no, no, yeah. I noticed that. I noticed that off rip. He was like, oh, have I made it? Have I missed it? Oh, no. Oh, I've missed yeah. it. Oh, I oh. Fuck off. I was, oh, I've, I've missed that, it. I know. You, you Nigga, you, we, you know damn well it was at 715. You know fucking the whole country knew, bro. Where are yeah, you? Where are you at? Out for this. Have I missed it? Oh, you piece of shit. <laughs> like, is your horse washed? Mama? Bro, if you don't... Oh, oh, where your daddy at? Exactly. Where's your dad? Could you? Oh, I was mad. I, I re-saw that. Like, this nigga was late to the war? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Man, you, you late to the vet? That, no, that's how I knew that shit was... It happened off rip. That shit but please, go ahead, yeah. That um yeah no he was I knew he was a bitch <laughs> I knew he was a bitch from that scene on um but no it was really good I enjoy I thoroughly enjoyed it I liked the um yeah the battle scenes and stuff like that mm-hmm. I liked when they pulled up to the Coliseum and they're like what the fuck is this yeah you know I didn't I've never known men to 
be able to build something like this because you know mm-hmm. Coliseum, that's where it all happened and it all went down. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, that was a it was it was really good. I enjoyed it. Russell Crowe, he did that. So yeah, both Russell Crowe movies I I enjoyed. I thoroughly enjoyed. Mm-hmm. They um the man the man can act. The yep. man can act. He plays those leading roles well. Um what was I going to say though about Gladiator? Was there anything? I don't think there was anything negative at all, really, that I didn't like about it. It made me wanna like it made me wanna keep learning about Roman shit, you know. Mm-hmm. Like always. <laughs> There's one thing I just want to know about the Romans. Who actually is Caligula? That sounds familiar. It sounds like something negative. <laughs> I, don't I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I don't know who it is, but this I've heard that name before. Yeah, I got to look that up. One um, one thing I want to know is, so when you become when you become emperor of Rome, do they just call you Caesar? You know what? That's because I, I thought was that was Julius Caesar. The that's the, what I thought too. But then they start calling Joaquin Phoenix Caesar. I'm like, so wait, so are you just all Caesar? Like, are y'all all from Caesar? Or I have no idea. Yeah, what is- I'm thinking is, it's like, yeah, since you've been, since you were emperor, you're going to be known as the first emperor okay. of Rome, which is Caesar. That's what I. That's what I got from it. I don't mm. know though. It could, but is he? He's not the um, Caesar that the famous one that like got stabbed like 23 no. times. Yeah, that's what I thought at first. I thought that's what his dad was. Yeah. But his dad is Marcus Aurelius, whoever the fuck. That's Mark Anthony's daddy. (laughs) You know, you know, that's that's facts. Nothing but facts. Nothing but facts. Yeah. That's a good question. Yeah, I don't I want to know what the logistics are on that. Yeah, I need I need some paperwork. Yeah, I need, yeah, that's something I want to find out. You know, uh, George, George is from my research department, ladies. Yeah, guys. George, get that, get that going. You know, my research department don't miss. Ever. He don't. He don't all. miss all four paws and all. Yeah, I'm a, I'm gonna get the answer to that because I, I just didn't like that nigga. He was just fucking weird, and this movie is super old, so I'm gonna just say it because I'm not really spoiling much. Mm-hmm. But when he stabbed Russell Crowe before the fight, mm-hmm. that's some fuck shit. That's yeah. what doing. This is... He's a smarmy little worm. Yeah. Little fuck boy. The outfits, though, were amazing. Oh, his, yeah. He had off-white. His throne, his, wherever he was sitting at his office. Jesus Christ. It's amazing. <laughs> Did he have E Pluribus Unum on the Whatever throne? the fuck is on the back of that. Yeah. It was, <laughs> it was some so shit. Yeah, phone. that shit is. Crazy. Yeah, that that his his setup was crazy. Yeah. Oh man, that yeah. I, I'm a now. I want to watch it all over again. All right. So no, yeah, Gladiator was good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Okay, that's what's up. Yeah. Um. Wow. So well, what did so what did you hit us with? So I I watched all my movies. Hmm. So before I get to the uh what is this the fourth my fourth oh yeah I haven't even yeah I didn't even yeah I'm gonna save that one, since we both had to watch that mm-hmm. I'm gonna um save that one for last so we can both give our take on it oh okay yeah uh huh um so the next one that I had watched oh god this mm-hmm. I think it was the one I liked the least because it made me so fucking sad. There like, it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Get it out. And it's Requiem for a Dream, lady. Mm. Requiem. Requiem. I want to make this sound as I don't want to I don't want to joke or add no like rants or anything on this one. Mm hmm. I'm going to try and make this sound as professional as possible. This movie dives into the lives of four individuals and their their gleaming ascent into a form of happiness. And it just gets them right downtrodden into sadness, despair, desperation, pain. Mm. All the... All the negative things you can feel. Yeah, like, all that negative emotions, and, exactly. And you're watching it. Like, you're 
you're watching. It, it, it's about four people and the addictions to the drugs that they have. And it, it's sad because it's like, what did the two main guys, Jared Little, you know, that's one of the white excellence. You know, mm-hmm. Shout out to him. And shout out white. Mm-hmm. Marlon Wayans. They play two of these uh, heroin addicts. And they're basically doing anything to score. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Jared stole his uh, mom's TV and sold it to this multiple mom. times. Yeah, multiple times because it was to chained. the point. Yeah, to the point where she had to chain it exactly. Yeah, and then it's like she goes down there and buys it back, and these guys are just getting high. So you you watch them do that. His girlfriend gets high with them, and. His mom starts to uh, do drugs as well, but not for the same reasons. Mm -hmm. She was invited to join, to be an audience member on her favorite uh, TV show that she always watches. So she wants to wear this red dress that she wore at her son's graduation, but can't fit in it. So she goes to her friend's doctor and he prescribes her some uh, amphetamines, but fucking speed. It's uppers. Mm -hmm. And it helps her lose weight. Yep, kind of like suppresses her appetite. Yeah, so you're you're seeing that, and it's like, all right, cool, that, cool. That's what's up. You just got to lose fifty pounds. Okay, cool. Then you go to uh, Marlon Wayans and Jared Leto's character, and they you start to see their um form of hope. I mean, the the old woman's form of hope was getting invited to the TV show, so she's happy. You're seeing like yeah. the form of happiness and like success so to speak that she wants yeah With the other three uh jared leto his girlfriend and uh marlon wayans marlon is trying to escape the drug life he just wants a little bit of peace and um some happiness those were his words I- i'm cool with a little bit of peace and some happiness um jared leto and his girlfriend are talking about opening up a clothing store because she designs clothes and all and their their only way that they can see to get these dreams of theirs is to start selling the very thing that they're smoking. Mm. Some things happen. They're trying to get plugs. Some shit goes wrong, and you you see you see them fail. You see all of them fail. They all had a form of like success and happiness, like I said, that they wanted to attain. And you get a good twelve minutes of ambition. The rest of it is just downfall it's just spiraling down the the woman was the saddest to me seeing oh, really? her, yeah. yeah like it gets to the yeah I'm gonna, I'm gonna speed this up for you guys she ends up um addicted to the fucking uh pills that she's taking uh to the point where she gets checked into a psych um facility psychiatric facility and she signs away at getting electroshock therapy and they're just that that shit doesn't look pleasing that, that that's not what she needs you know but it's like but it's like she doesn't even know what's going on really yeah that's the fucked up part yeah she's not even in the right frame of mind to even sign off on nothing like that exactly it's fucking horrible the other people um they go through withdrawal because they can't get a plug no more the girlfriend's doing sex acts Oh and that, that was the second saddest thing for me. Oh, my that, God. Yeah, that, shit, that whole ass to ass scene. Ass that, to ass. If you've seen Rick Room for Dream, you know what ass to ass means. That shit is crazy. The other two, they're, um, one guy loses an arm. Uh, Marlon, he goes through. They He gets locked up. Mm-hmm. He's going to withdraw, but he's like, you know. now He's, he's locked up. up. Yeah, you're a ward of the prison system. So now you're. Shit, it's basically uh free free um labor while you're doing withdrawal, while you're going mm-hmm. to withdraw. Yep. You got these racist ass um officers. So it's just it's sadness all around. And I think it's the best one I've seen, but my least favorite because I forgot it was a movie. I felt like I was just watching people. Yeah. Like I was like, oh my fucking God, what what's going on? Mm-hmm. And oh, Here's something I didn't know. Any of you guys watch Saw? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. I agree. Yes. That's right. Uh huh. I can hear you guys saying yes. It's a goat. Yes. Of course. Yeah, it's a goat. Yeah. With people who agree with me, I agree with you guys. Thank you. Exactly. So you guys know it's Saw. At the very end, you hear that. Dun-dun-dun. 
and then it's like, oh, it wasn't a lasagna. It was a calzone the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my fucking God. <laughs> <laughs> it was, oh my god it was a castle the whole time and it's like oh that was the big twist <laughs> so i thought i thought the the guy who did the uh score for the saw series made <laughs> that beat made that score mm-hmm. that shit was made in 2000 by the um i don't know what his name is or what her name is mm-hmm but that was their shit. And it's literally titled Requiem for a Dream. Yeah. And I was like, oh my, they start the movie off. Eight minutes in, mm-hmm. you hear that that song. You hear that that theme and that beat and the score just I'm like, oh my God, wait, is there a twist coming? So it just it fucked me up. And I was like, oh, this is gonna be good. They're going off rip with a twist. Yeah. And then I just get fucked over. <laughs> it's like, I'm never, I'm never watching that movie again <laughs> one time was enough I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't even replay and if you guys know me, i like to replay scenes yeah. i like to re- I, I like to hear the tone of voice someone did or the action that was taken or just to replay because i like that scene so much mm-hmm. with this movie no I, I didn't replay shit i couldn't wait for it to end i was just hoping like damn this shit is it, it's getting fucked up like it, it's yeah. sad and it's real yeah, life real. That's there's this is reality. <clears throat> like there are people going through that. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, it, like you said, um, when I first watched it, I was just traumatized instantly for the rest. I mean, it's just some shit in, in there you just don't want to see sometimes. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but it like yeah, but it's a uh, um yeah, it's real in the sense that this is what can happen. This you can lead on this road, um, with these type of drugs like that. Addiction is crazy. It is. It really is. And yeah, if you don't like you, and I like that you brought up hope a lot because yeah, that's a, that's a part of it. That's a part of addiction Mm -hmm. is you have a hope that, okay, I'm a kick out of it. And what, what am I do? Oh, I'm a start a clothing store with my girlfriend or I'm a get on that TV show. Yeah. But it's like the one constant is the, the heroin or the drugs or the, the pills that keep Mm -hmm. staying there and it keeps staying there and staying there and you don't that cut that stuff keeps getting pushed back and pushed back even farther to where you don't even see it so yeah there's a lot of hope there is a i think hope is a uh is a kind of theme in the story yeah and if there is honestly at one at the end is like there is no hope it doesn't end you don't the movie doesn't end uh, like a full 360 or full 180 turnaround with a no nope. you know He's in rehab now, and he's learning from his mistakes. No, it just ends. No, yeah, it's like like it's like like in real life, you know, just mm-hmm. exactly. it's just terrible. They had hope through a negative thing like drugs, and it, it's so fucking. It's just a sad film. It, yeah, very that, disturbing imagery. <laughs> oh my god, yes, the scene where the old woman thought the fridge was coming at her. Um, mm. You guys gotta check this movie out. It's on HBO Max if you have it. Please go check it out. Um, just just traumatize yourself for a little bit. Yeah, this shit, man. I, I don't even know. This is good. This is in my mind now. This is fresh mm. in my mind. Yeah, I, it's good. Oh no, yeah, you. It's trauma. <sighs> it's going. No. Yep. That's what I wanted. That's why I signed it to you. I wanted. I wanted that. I need to share my trauma, and you need. You know, you need to experience that. <laughs> Yeah, what was that that you said the other day? You said it's like it follows. In order to get it off of you, you got to. Oh yeah, I have to. Yeah, I have to pass it to you. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) In order for it to, you know, get out that curse, that trauma off of me, you have to recommend the movie to someone, and Uh, they have to watch it. So now it's off of me. Yeah, I'm free. I'm free from the shadows. (laughs) Oh man, you are deep in it. (laughs) Um, yeah, I'm in there. Yeah, so you got to give it to Wendy, or you got to give it to somebody. So far into the shadows, me and Batman friends. Man. Man, that's and if you guys haven't seen It Follows, I recommend that too. It's a great film. It's about the 96, 97 Bulls and how they make it. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I mean, Charles Barkley hits people from Spain. Oh my god. And against them in the Olymp- No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> that's terrible. No, he was elbowing niggas though, but 
back to the main thing. <laughs> check out It Follows, too. That, that's a good one. But check out Requiem for a Dream. For yeah. Me. Yeah, check it out. Woo! If you want to oh. impress yourself. Um, let, Let's but, get to the... So, yeah. That, so, this is my last movie mm-hmm. that, that I watched, that you told me to watch. Mm-hmm. And it was a horror movie. Some horror. We yeah. did watch this one together, so, you know... Yeah. It was good. I fucking loved it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a Spanish movie coming out of Spain. Spain yeah. horror, Spanish horror movie um, yeah. called Veronica. Vero, oh. Veronica. Big Vero on the block. Now, Veron- let me tell you about Veronica, okay? Let me tell you why you don't do seances, people. Just don't do it. Just don't. I don't care if 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 I have friends, if I had two of my friends and I'm over there, we chilling and they talking about, ooh, we got our Ouija board. We about to do a seance. I'm cutting off. Oh my God. I would never speak to them again. Y'all are weird, bro. <laughs> Y'all are fucking weird. Don't ever pull no seance, uh, lighting a candle with a Ouija board. Is there any spirits here? I don't give a hot fuck. I don't believe in that shit, okay? Yeah. I'm not a ghost person. I don't believe in ghosts. But like I've always been saying for years, I watch way too many scary movies to play. So I don't play. Mm. If I see my dog right now, look at a corner of the room, <laughs> and he's like not moving, I'm like, what's there? And I'm going to that corner, and I'm hitting the corner of the... I don't <laughs> fuck, the fuck. <laughs> I'm, I'm hitting something over there. I'm like, what is it? What did we see? <laughs> I don't, but mind you, I'm not a ghost person. I don't believe in ghosts. But mm-hmm. like I said, I watch too many scary movies and I'm, I don't play. Yeah. So we don't play with this shit. That's first off. <laughs> don't play with people. Don't play with Ouija boards. Y'all are weird. Okay. Stop. Stop. Calm down. Calm down. Say calm. <laughs> I don't see why you gotta calm down. They they used to sell that shit at Toys R Us. I don't. When, oh my god! When the see first them. movie came out with um, what was it? Robin Williams. I remember that vividly. They sold the game Jumanji, and I thought that was crazy enough. I don't want an elephant in my house. And then right next to Jumanji was a fucking Ouija board, and they tried to sell that shit as a family playing it, like the whole the um oh, hell whole no paper in front of it was a family like laughing. I'm like, that's a fucking Ouija board. You're gonna die. Pretty much, yeah. Not, oh, yeah. my God. If you want to die, go ahead and do that. Oh, my God. Yeah, so basically that's the story. Um, uh, Some friends come, o- come over with Veronica, and they're like, hey, girl, we got a Ouija board. Let's do this shit. And she was like, bet. And they, they Ouija'd it up. She wanted to talk to her father, who was dead, so she had a reason to do it. <laughs> but nah, girl, nah. So, yeah, they did the Ouija board. The spirit ends up possessing Veronica, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, she has to shenanigans do ensue. Shenanigans ensue. That's to be the whole fucking yep. fucking name of the movie. <laughs> shenanigans ensue. And then another thing, I got uh, another uh, point I want to make about this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Veronica is fifteen years old, and she is a single mother, but she don't have no kids. Okay, <laughs> the mom is trash. The mother. Is trash. She's working at this restaurant. I don't know if she owns the restaurant. I don't know if she's just a waitress. But she is there for more than 12 hours a day. Yeah. There's a scene where she drops the kids off in the morning at the restaurant. And then at night, everybody's home but the mama. Where yeah. is she at? She's still at the restaurant working. I don't know what was going on. I don't know what the economy is like. I don't know how much your paycheck is. Yeah. But you need to watch these children. Must have been harsh in Spain in 1991. Exactly. She's a she had three kids and she's only 15 years old with three kids. Hasn't even had her period yet, mind you, which is a which is a grisly detail. I had to tell you. Mm-hmm. It, it go. It's in the movie. Oh yeah, but, it, it's hard. Yeah. And, and and she and she has to raise these children by herself, pretty much. Oh my god. And then, and while all while dealing with that. I got a ghost in me. Okay. And I got a ghost in me. Oh my God. I don't even know it. Yeah. And it's a, it's, it was really good. I really enjoyed it because my thing about horror movies is, yeah, they're scary. Oh, let's, okay, let's do the scene. Okay. She's washing her face in the sink. Oh, close the mirror. Ooh, wash your face looking good. Open the medicine cabinet, get the Q tips. 
close the medicine cabinet. Oh shit, there's somebody behind her. Mm-hmm. We've we've seen that, you know, we've done I, that. Like behind me in the air now because I've seen that scene too many times. Exactly. Yeah, I've seen it too many times. I can't, you know. So it works. It works, but yeah, you know, you don't want to see it every day in every horror movie you watch because now it's expected. Yeah, exactly. But I honestly kind of see. I like this style of horror movie. It reminds me of Hereditary, which Hereditary is probably probably my favorite horror movie ever. Hereditary is probably in my top fifteen movies. Period. Oh, that's a good. No, yeah. Ooh. Period. That, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but it's like that, and it doesn't take itself not to. It takes itself seriously, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. If the director films the movie like it's a fucking, like it's a fucking, you know, big budget drama or something like that, or it's a with with great shots and great cut scene, great color palettes and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. The movie, yeah, it was really, really well shot. The camera operated camera work really good a plus just like hereditary <laughs> um but yeah the acting was really good in this movie i was scared shitless i don't like my the scare the things about me is the you get the music sometimes but then the ones you don't where you don't get the music that's the shit yeah. that's the shit that that makes me uneasy and makes me cuz it's so real because obviously when you walk in your house you ain't going to hear no music don't don or no Little violin amp and shit up. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be real. The niggas just gonna be behind you. Yeah, it's just gonna <laughs> and be. He it. ain't gonna make a sound. Exactly. It fucks me up. So that's um, that's something I've noticed, especially with the new age of horror. Like back when slasher was the big thing. You know, if you watch Freddy Krueger or Jason, you will hear that 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 theme song. You're like, oh yeah, here it come. They're building up the suspense for you. Like get ready. Mm-hmm. Then. I remember when The Strangers came out, there was no fucking music. And this woman... Oh, yeah, The Strangers, this, yeah. And this yeah, woman, that, in the living room. And I, I, my my hairs are standing up right now because it's like, that's some real shit. That, you know, you ain't got fucking Lil' Kim playing in the background. He just there. <laughs> but you know, I digress. We, let's go back to Veronica. How did you feel about well, one of the things I liked was it's a Spanish film, so it's naturally in Spanish, mm-hmm. but it has subtitles. Right. That's what scared me the most because I'm reading, trying to mm-hmm. take in the dialogue, mm-hmm. and then bam, the water turned black. Exactly. How did you feel about that? No, it was good. I well, I was um, I'm pretty experienced um with my uh subtitle reading. <laughs> Yeah, because I, can- <laughs> uh, I could read it real fast and like kind of get back to it. Mm-hmm. But it's um no, it was it was it wasn't really a challenge really, but it was good. Okay. I I mean I I have an affinity for Spanish in general, um so I like hearing Spanish. <laughs> All right, that's what's up. And by the way, but, oh go ahead, go ahead. But um no, I was just gonna say that um it I kind of add something to it because you know as as americans we don't we we don't really like anything that we don't uh aren't too familiar with so mm-hmm. it was an unfamiliarity that that happens when you're watching a horror movie in another language like that yeah something mildly uneasy about it but no it was really i enjoyed veronica that's good that's thoroughly good. and um shout out to the spanish film society the latino cinema group community i don't know yeah. the exact names of it yeah shout out to y'all y'all doing it right now you guys are putting out some good shit with veronica and then um the platform mm-hmm. oh my god platform is very very good both on netflix yeah i'm looking forward to some uh more latin films some spanish films i'm, I'm ready know. i'm here for it try back yeah especially with the um you know the parasite last year getting all that recognition you know International films are starting to come up. Um, yeah. What Roma? I watched Roma. That got even a lot of recognition two years ago. Really? Yeah, Roma was really good. I almost wanted to uh, make you watch that too. Mm. Um, yeah, Roma was good. You should watch it with uh, Wendy too. She'll probably love it. I'm gonna have to check that out. Yeah, it's really good. Really good. So, so what you saying though earlier about Americans not 
liking things that are different. Yeah. You're saying like they don't they don't understand like change and difference. Well, no, like That's more the, like uh, rapper pointed out with a top five greatest albums of all time, my beautiful dark strips of fantasy. Oh my god. And how he he mentioned that, like why are people so scared of change and different? Mm. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you know. It all it all comes back to Kanye on here at the Ted Nett show. Yeah, all the time. All the time. It it all comes full circle back to Mr. West. It goes back to Kanye, J Law, and California Black Bears. Speaking of Kanye, did you see you know that clip I sent you about Kanye and him on the interview talking about Taco Bell? Okay, so there's that clip. But the same interview, he's talking about um I did watch that interview though. You watched it? Uh uh-huh. the whole thing? Yeah. Yeah, I want to I think I do I want to watch the whole thing. I don't know. I'm just I oh, recommend Kanye. anyone who is a fan or anyone who is mad or anyone who just doesn't like Kanye to watch all of his interviews. Charlemagne the God, Nick yeah. Cannon, the one at TMZ. He's the shit he says is crazy. I will give you guys that. And it is like what the fuck is wrong with you? But watch the interview and the full interviews. And he goes further. He can explain what he's trying to tell you. Yeah, that's the thing. He tries to on tell trying. You. He can't find the verbiage. He to, can't to give you what he to tell you what he's trying to tell you. But in the interviews, he does. He's he is letting you know what he's trying to tell you. So I get it. I get it with the whole Taco Bell thing and the ramen noodles thing. I don't fuck with Taco Bell, but hey, I'm not from Chicago, so there's that. Yeah, Kanye, he's a he's a different breed. <laughs> yeah. But what I was what I wanted to bring up real quick before we get into the last movie was mm-hmm. he, he had to explain to his wife Kim Kardashian what um what white girl speak was, <laughs> um because you know that's what she sound like. But you know, as a black, he was saying as a black man, you had to like kind of explain to people what your worldview is sometimes, you know? Yeah. What and she didn't get it. I was like, what do you mean you didn't get it? This is this has been a thing since I was a been alive. Yeah. Like, you know, you got that with the white girl voice, the valley girl voice. Mm-hmm. She was like, what? I don't <laughs> understand. My point exactly. You're doing exactly. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's just how I talk. Kind of man. <laughs> It, oh my god we have to it's because we grow up different we we have a whole different perspective on life exactly yeah and, and life people. life in general is all about perspective yeah exactly i like that i like that but um yeah so what's the last film edward all right here we go so the last film the last one and i believe we had watched this together right Mm-hmm. because i talked on wreck dismiss jojo rabbit and hot rod so fifth was nineteen. There we go, nineteen seventeen. <sighs> Amazing cinematography. Mm. Amazing cinematography. Nineteen seventeen. It's a long time ago. Exactly. Um. So single shot film. Single shot about the World War One effort. It talks about two people and they have to deliver a message to a battalion that is pushing up on the Germans. The message is don't attack. It's a fucking trap. So they got to go behind enemy lines, so to speak, and get it to the group. Find a general and let them know. Amazing all the way through. I love the single shot. I love the, the, the visuals, the light scene. I don't like the character, however, because he ain't a real. Oh, one. oh. Um, it, it was just, it was, it was crazy. But you know, that was just my take on it. You go ahead with, with the rest of yours. I don't like the character, mm-hmm. but I do like the movie. I mean, I get why you don't like the characters because there's some certain decisions that were made in the film and towards the middle of the film, and actually, actually at the beginning, yeah. Mm-hmm. That uh, woo, that were. Uh, fatal to uh, to say that and there were some there were some mistakes. Fuck milk. That's yeah, that too. Then milk, yeah, fucking 
fuck babies and fuck milk. That's all I got to say. Anyways, <laughs> anyways. Um, but yeah, 1917, it was glorious. I fucking loved it. I, it lived up to all the hype for me because I was all hyped for it. Um, yeah, it's a it's a movie, you know, set in World War One, and there two guys have to get a message to um, the other, uh, basically like the other battalion or the other part of the army mm-hmm. that's uh, being led to an, an attack. Mm-hmm. Um, but the attack is apparently a trap set by the Germans, and so he just has to get that message to them, or they're gonna all gonna die. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, pretty much that happens, but. It's it's just a really really well done movie as far as the cinematography, which it won for um, best cinematography at the Oscars, and mm-hmm. just the the camera work in general. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it, it's supposed to set up from like the movie is all shot in one shot, so the once the camera pushes record, it like never it almost like never stops it makes it seem like yeah it focuses on the two guys it doesn't cut back to like what the people are doing at the communications tower Mm -hmm. or what's going on in the aerial um scoping of the land it just the cameras on these two guys and whatever surrounds them it doesn't know that's i mean we were making jokes the whole time like it's almost like a video game like the start of call of duty yeah it's call of duty the movie yeah exactly get your carbine or your car which one you want oh get some grenades too Exactly. No, my mentor, Predator. I'm Press R one to cook grenade and release it to throw. Yeah, like it was. It was like kind of almost like that. I mean, the way the camera just focused and moved with the people, yeah. and the lighting in the movie was so beautiful. I mean, everything was everything was really well done in this movie. I thoroughly enjoyed it. That's why I wanted you to watch it because I wanted to enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, for any of you movie buffs, um, I recommend this. Over all the five movies that we had just mentioned. And what I mean by movie buffs is the people who pay attention to dialogue, to lighting, to the the framework, the cinematography, the um the scene, the the backdrop, the colors, the fading, any any of that. And all of you people who like that, who pay attention to that, and who fuck with that heavy, 1917. I can't think of another single shot film really. Nice. Yeah, I mean, I can't. I bet you there are, but I can't really think of one off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nineteen seventeen is that. That was great. That was amazing. That was some good shit right there. Yeah. Um. Let me see. That's that's all five, right? That's yeah, that's all end. five movies. Yeah, that I watched and you watched. Yeah, right there. Yeah. So I definitely i I enjoyed it. Yeah. Give me. Give me something. Okay, give me a quick. How about this? Make this real quick. Mm-hmm. Rank them. Rank the five movies right now. I'll go first so you can think about it. Okay. So out of all the movies that you may be to watch, that's Veronica, Focus, Gladiator, 310 to Yuma, and Watchmen. Mm-hmm. Mm, number one, it is low-key a tie. <laughs> but I think I'm going to give it... Ooh, fuck. I'm think I might give it. I'm gonna give it to Watchmen. I'm gonna give it to Watchmen. That was the, so that was my number one. Cause it's DC. Honestly, it's a tie between Veronica and Watchmen, but I think I might give the slight hair to Watchmen. It was just a really good all around movie. I didn't expect the movie to be like that too. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm definitely giving it to Watchmen, God, guys. He's leaving mm-hmm. Marvel. No God. Swamp Thing. Never that. Batman. Never that. Flash. He's cool. Captain Cold. No. (laughs) But the close second, like I said, very, very close second is Veronica. Oh, go ahead. Veronica is the... That was really good. One of my favorite horror movies I've seen recently. Um, Coming in hot third. A hot third. Ooh, man. I don't know. Now, Now... I don't know which one is third. I'm gonna think. I'm gonna say Gladiator's third. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just enjoyed the shit out of that movie. The acting was really good. It's probably the best acting out of all these. Russell Crowe, stabbing toes, stabbing toes. Joaquin Phoenix out here being weird. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Fucking that's the disc- that was he's... a prerequisite for Joker. Just so everybody knows. Exactly. <laughs> I can go from this to Joker. 
<laughs> or he's, I mean, and then he's been doing it for years, like hundreds of years, apparently. If it was, if this is true, <laughs> going from the you know being a gladiator, being then being murdered in the in the Coliseum, being revived, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden he moves to wherever joke he moves to Gotham City, and yeah. so shenanigans ensue. That's so yeah, third is definitely gladiator. Fourth would definitely be focus. And last, probably 310 to Yuma. But like I said, I mean, I enjoyed every one of these movies. They were all really, really, really good. Okay. But yeah, give me give me a quick ranking, Edward, of your of the five movies that I gave you. Give me something quick. Um wait a minute. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, cool, cool. Because 1917 was on my list. You just happen to watch it. Okay, gotcha. Okay, cool. Um, when it comes to my, oh my god, hmm. I'm gonna have to say, oh, I'm gonna go 1917 as the best one. Oh, oh, man, it's Call of Duty, the movie. Mm-hmm. This man does not want to kill. I'm like, nigga, kill. Like, yeah, man, you, you don't the... click R3 for finisher. Click it. Click. <laughs> they won't let you progress. Um, after that, I'm gonna say, oh, I'm gonna say Requiem for a Dream. Mm. Requiem is was good. It was just so good that it was bad. Like, yeah, I, like I felt bad. Yeah, um, and I don't even do drugs. Like, I don't shit. I, I couldn't. I can't relate to any of them people mm-hmm. watching them and knowing that this goes on in the world. Mm-hmm. Like, it's crazy. Um, coming in at number three, we're going to go with Jojo Rabbit. I like, oh, young goat, young goat. Yeah. Jojo was the shit. Then I'm going to say, I'm going to go hot rod at number four Mm. and dismissed at number five. Mm. I only put dismissed at the bottom because, uh, Danny McBride said that that damn scene he was all like let's go i've been drinking green tea all day (laughs) dad it's still that that puts it over the hump yeah because i'm like what the fuck is green tea (laughs) (laughs) hard for green tea and he was beating this guy's ass oh wait yeah man i just all great movies i I like this list we got to do this again sometime oh yeah we definitely do I, yeah. I I was so focused on this list that um honestly I don't have a rant. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't I'm okay. sorry. I just I shit is I don't have a rant. It's all good, you know. I mean, hey, you you just watched, you know, Requiem for a Dream recently, so you got to you got to Why am I even ranting? What am I even ranting about? Yeah, exactly. I need to be helping these people. <laughs> That. No, I understand, and yeah, we'll have to. We'll probably hit them back on the next episode. We'll probably hit them with two rants. You know, you never know what's going to happen on the next episode of exactly. that show. You never know. So yeah, let's ra- let's wrap it up here. That I think this know, is a we, great place to end it. Yeah, we we all um, watched our movies, and yeah, we're going to definitely do this again. Mm-hmm. Definitely do this thing because I had fun. Yeah, it's you. real fun. This yeah. Is- um just kill somebody, bro. Just kill. Uh but yeah, no, I, I thoroughly loved it. And yeah, like I said, we're gonna do it again, maybe with like albums or maybe with uh TV shows, maybe with uh fucking I don't know, fucking oh, did, before we, we go before, <laughs> before we go. <laughs> <laughs> the Stoner 69 with the ACOC scope is the best. No, I'm there it is, yeah. Hey. <laughs> Before we end this, did you check out my uh, my bonus film for you? Uh, go on xvideos.com. Oh, never that. Carla <laughs> Lane. It's a self help. Oh no. Bioptic docu series. Not at all. Not at all. Episodic docu series. There we go. No oh, god. Episodic. <laughs> you write right. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, it was really. I enjoyed all five of them, and yeah. I'm ex- I'm excited to do it again. 
Yeah, we definitely got to do this again. So um, yeah, that was that was that was our episode. Mm-hmm. Thank y'all again for tuning in. Thank y'all right. for rocking with us. We're gonna keep them pumping out. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like we said, it's a little late today, but it's on Wednesday, so shut the fuck up. <laughs> exactly. Shit. <laughs> It's here. You listening to it on Wednesday. It's here. Every Wednesday. Yeah. Every Wednesday. Exactly. So keep Shit keep happens. coming back. Because we're we going to keep being here. You know what I'm saying? No. You feel me? we here for you. We're here for you and only you. <laughs> All right, y'all. Peace out. Catch you on the flippity.